Hello all, it's Jess here from Official London Theatre. Well, it's been a bit of a long minute, hasn't it? Today we are doing something super, super exciting and I am so emotional already. We are heading to the first ever pilot at the London Palladium where the wonderful Beverly Knight will be singing a concert and I'm going to take you guys with me. First of all, I just wanted to start this video by going through the importance of the pilots and essentially what they are. Obviously, since COVID-19, the theatres have been closed for a number of months and we've all been really missing theatre land. So this is a milestone in the reopening of theatres. These trial performances will be testing social distancing measures within theatres. So these will be slightly different to the two metres and one metre measures that we know, just because theatres are often smaller and they run a little bit differently. Measures that are taken will be that all masks are mandatory within the theatre. We will have temperature checks. We all have e-tickets and there will be contactless payment and there will be extra hand sanitising machines available throughout the theatre. So ahead of the performance, we were sent an email with information on what we should do before we arrive and what we should do when we arrive. This was so helpful. I'm gonna go through a bit of it now with you. First things first, you need to assess yourself. So if you have any of the symptoms of COVID, then you should avoid traveling and going to the theatre. You should also take your temperature before traveling. Pack your face covering. This is one that I made last week and it's got space for a little tissue to go in, which just kind of filters anything out. Bring minimal belongings. So today I'm just gonna be taking this little side bag. It will have my phone, my money and my mask inside it. As you know, theatres will be doing bag checks, but just to make the whole process a bit quicker, a smaller bag is a lot more helpful. Consider your travel options. So if possible, you should walk or cycle to the theatre. When we arrive, we'll be joining a line and this will be the test and trace line where we will provide our contact details for the NHS test and trace system. I'm sure it will all be familiar to you now, but there will also be markings on the floor where you should follow the directions that they lead you in, making sure that you are keeping a safe distance between other people. Finally, now we've spoken through all that, there's only one thing left for me to do, which is go to the theatre. I am so excited. I have been waiting such a long time to get my feet back in those doors and I am definitely going to cry. So here we are, I am in the queue at the theatre. You're gonna have to get used to my voice being quite muffled behind my mask. I'm just waiting for Richard. I can't quite believe that I'm finally here. Really looking forward. I've already seen they've got like security checks. They've got ushers in the queue, kind of keeping everyone informed, which is really lovely and just kind of letting everyone know what to expect when they go in. So Richard, how are you feeling about going in? I'm excited. This is the first time I've been in the theatre for five months, so I'm really looking forward to it. And the queue has gone down really quickly, hasn't it? Really quick. I think we only got in the queue maybe five minutes ago, ten minutes ago, so... Um, and everyone's just kind of working through and getting our bags checked, and I assume then we'll get our temperature checked and we'll go in. seats and we are smiling with happiness <laughs> really Can't exaggerate wait. those like eyebrows <laughs> i need to take these glasses off yeah that was so easy wasn't it so easy really quick um all the ushers are obviously really well trained yeah. um and really friendly and everyone's everyone's really looking forward to it, you can tell already there's such a lovely atmosphere yeah and it was quite fun <laughs> Yeah. I think that like going in and getting a temperature check. It's exactly. Kind of, it's a bit like being in an airport. Yeah. And um, I think we're kind of used to, you know, like washing our hands and, you know, and giving people space and it feels normal. So I'm just going to order my own in seat service drink. Um, please, can I have a Coca Cola? Absolutely. And obviously, it's all contactless, so you need to make sure you've got your card or your phone to make payment with. I want to stress one thing, that the measures that we've taken at the Palladium are not about just getting the London Palladium open. It's nothing to do with that. It's about my passion for the theatre and for the live entertainment all over the country, all over the world. Up there, I can see the seat that I sat in the first time I ever saw anything in live theatre, which was the Palladium pantomime when I was about seven. And uh, it's one of those experiences that you cannot, cannot, um, ever eradicate. It's one of the things that turned me on to theatre. I was lucky enough that very soon after that I fell in love with musicals and saw My Fair Lady and West Side Story and they were live, they were theatre and 
it absolutely, absolutely grabbed me. And theatre is my life, and it's the one thing that I really feel that I can do is to give something back to the profession that has been so good to me. But theatre is not like the cinema. You can't just get a film and project it. And when we are allowed to open again, it's going to take at least four to six weeks, even for a long-running show, to get itself back up again. And the second thing, which I think is really important to remember, is, is that a new show will take much, much longer than that, take nine months. And um, you've got to take all the decisions about whether to build scenery, we've got to get the shops open to do all of that. Um, it's not something that can be just done like that. So what we badly, badly need is a date when we can reopen. One final thing in emphasizing that, I think it is vital, vital, that you understand that this is not about my theatres, it is about getting all venues where live entertainment uh, can take place open. Um, I think we must make a plea for the regions and the pantomimes. Um, I know uh, from Michael Harrison, who is the great pantomime producer in Britain, that if he doesn't know by August the 1st that the pantomimes can open and without social distancing, that he cannot proceed. And that means that the lifeblood, the thing that the regional theatres depend on, will just evaporate and go, and this cannot be allowed. We must, must get the regional theatres open. While I'm not supposed to encourage you to sing and things, I can encourage you to get on your feet and clap! Woo! So you can do that, just so you know. And it's going to get very, very sweaty later, so better get prepared. Are you with me? At least four months, yeah. And it is a mad, weird atmosphere, but amazing. It's, yeah, it's brilliant to be back in a the theatre and it's brilliant to see like live performance again. And there's no one better than Beverly, really. No one better than Beverly. It was just saying that her voice, when she first came in, she just did this massive riff and it just, and it, everyone kind of got goosebumps and there was just a massive cheer. So I never thought I would film in the toilet for work. Um, but this is me in the loo, and as you can see, it is empty, it's just me. No queues, it's really lovely. Um, so every other sink um, is do not use. You've got your hand wash signs here, and all of the hand dryers are switched off. The bins are the fancy switch. Um, yeah, there's lots of ushers everywhere just kind of letting you know where to go so people don't get lost and they're following the four signs and yeah it's great fun when the night is come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see no i won't be afraid no, I won't, won't be afraid Just as long as you stand Stand by me And all in the morning stand by me Oh, stand, stand by me Oh, stand by me oh, Stand by me, stand by me. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> we've just finished, it's just finished. And it was incredible. She was fantastic. Her voice is so, oh, it, I, there's no feeling like hearing someone's own, like their true tone or voice, yeah. just in your ears, and just yeah. hearing that ringing. Um, she just did an acapella, acapella version of Stand By Me and it was, yeah, that's oh. how she ended, and it was just, the just perfect ending. yeah, phenomenal, really so, phenomenal. And such a mixture of songs. She got like some disco, lots she of soul, memory, and, which was yeah. oh. She did something for the bodyguard, so we got some musical theatre in there as well, which is fantastic. So yeah, yeah it was a really special afternoon actually. There we go. That was a 
keep saying it, but it was just such an incredible feeling to be in a theatre for the first time in four months. Beverly Knight, what an amazing, amazing voice. And her whole band were just incredible. They all looked like they were having such a great time. And it was just amazing seeing people doing their thing on stage where they belong. The front of house team were excellent. They were so welcoming as usual and you know, calm, there was no issues at all. It was just so easy. Just walk straight into Toya, walk straight out. It was a really great experience. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to Official London Theatre because we have been putting out some incredible stuff throughout the whole of lockdown and this period. There's been some excellent, excellent covers. Please also make sure you are following our social channels. So it's London Theatre on Instagram, London underscore theatre on Twitter and Official London Theatre on Facebook. We are owned by the Society of London Theatre who have been doing the amazing work of lobbying to the government of why theatre and live performance is so important. So if you want the news and the official news, then make sure you're following us. See you later. Keep safe.